All right, this next one, this is the, uh, the iconic big kahuna burger of the, uh, of this assembly. And that's this, uh, this, this frame, it's called the vent frame, uh, at least in the drawings it's called that. Um, the, there were some challenge in the, challenges in this, um, and I thought the slots were going to be a challenge, but uh, they really turned out not to be. I had some, um, some excellent tools uh, um, given to the project by a Niagara tool, uh, Niagara Seco. They donated some end mills for me to, uh, to cut these slots, and uh, I thought I was going to need a handful of them, but I ended up doing uh, all those slots with one tool, and you guys will see that in a minute. The big challenge was this curvature in here. Um, and, you, you know, the access into this, right? So I can't uh, add this on after, so you have to kind of plunge in, uh, in, in the right place to, uh, to form this radius. And um, um, so, and I had a lot of trouble with it. Uh, there was a lot of chatter, and uh, I ended up having to modify the tool several times to do that, but uh, you guys will get to see my pain. Uh, real shortly here. So um, let's go see how we process that. This came out of a, uh, a large plate. Uh, so we did some sawing and then um, um, some milling and uh, a little bit, of, you know what, and even some filing. So uh, <laughs> let's go, uh, let's go see, uh, watch my pain. <laughs>
Doing some threading here. Um, we're threading on the opposite side in uh, in reverse. That way we can see the tool and uh, and uh, we're not stopping up against a uh, a shoulder, which is always kind of handy uh, for internal threading. Uh, see, oh, just gotta remember to turn the spindle in the right way. We're gonna go in reverse. A little bit of oil and. Uh, Got to pay attention here for a second, folks. Um, let's take a little tenth out cut here. I'm going to be coming out like so. I think that's it. And that will be a right handed thread. Um, we did everything right. I'll go back to our starting place. For a uh, a match with this little this little monkey here, I didn't think I was close. I just uh, it never hurts to uh, to give it a try just for fun, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Come on, Butterfingers. Beep. All right. Stop. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs> I'll hit those with a little scotch bright in there to polish the tops, but uh, other than that.
Okay, so this is actually kind of interesting. So we're using this big form tool here uh, to cut this internal radii that uh, is pretty broad. And I'm having some trouble here. You can see it's chattering. You can see the crappy finish on it. Um, this is uh, kind of hard to get in there to do anything with it. So it really needs to kind of get machined uh, to uh, a nice finish. Uh, so I'm not quite to depth yet. Um, what's ultimately going to happen here is this radius here is going to blend into this uh, this diameter here, okay, and then transition into a just a tiny little flat down at the bottom. Um, so yeah, I'm having trouble. And um, actually, let me pop this other. Nah, you know what? It's it's in the tool holder right now. But it kind of looks like this. This is the tool. And so what I'm going to do. Um, so instead of trying to cut it all in one whack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make two tools. One that is the interior side and one that's the exterior side and they'll just have a, a little bit of overlap. And um, so I can come up and get a nice blend. So I'll be cutting less material. The, the cut is will be half, basically the width of the cut or the length of the arc, I should say. So anyway, I... I I had made a template to uh, to um, offer the drawing to grind the tool to, so fortunately that was that came in handy because it was really easy to grind a second tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off half of this so it doesn't cut, and then I'll grind the other tool so it cuts the half that this is missing. I hope that makes sense. So uh, let me finish that up, and then we'll go in there with a half a tool. quite the squeaker. The splitting the two tools worked fine. So the chatter, uh, I got rid of the chatter. I got a nice blend. Um, I'll do a little uh, scotch bright and take a break. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, tense. Um, you know, sneaking up on the depth and then um, uh, getting the two radii to blend uh, um, was kind of nerve-wracking. At the right angle. Oh, I gotta go the other way. Double check.
Yeah, baby. <laughs> Okay, this is the last index on this deal, and um, I guess I just want to talk about this end mill a little bit. Uh, this is a um, um, Niagara uh, stabilizer end mill, and this was donated uh, by uh, Niagara Tools, my friend Dennis Nolan, and he sent me some of these. And this is eighth inch diameter, uh, it's about a quarter inch of uh, effective flute length. Um, it's uh, aluminum, titanium, nitride coated, uh, but it's got a very special variable geometry. And um, anyway, I thought this was going to be one of the hardest parts of the whole job, right? Is cutting all these slots, but it's turning out to be the easiest with these end mills. So um, I've done all this work and I'm going to do the last slot with one end mill and uh, 3,000 RPM, um, about to 120 thousandths depth of cut uh, per pass. Now I could actually take the full depth, I tested it on a test piece, but uh, this, uh, I wanted to be a little bit conservative, uh, you know, because I got a lot of work in this thing. But, and I don't know, it's two, three inches a minute or something like that, two inches a minute. Um, that's just a guesstimate based on, you know, watching it. And this thing's just motoring through this. and. They perform better when you load them up a little bit. If you baby them, uh, then uh, they, want, they want to squeak a little bit. But if you crank up the feet a bit, um, they go to town. And the chips evacuate really nicely. And these burrs that are left here, basically you can knock them off with, a, with your finger or a brush, right? So quite impressive. So that's a Niagara stabilizer. Dennis, thank you very much for, uh, for donating those to the project. It's awesome. Uh, I'm stoked about it. So let's cut this last groove and get this thing off the mill. Okay, yeah, that's 118,000 depth of cut. And I'm going to say that's three inches a minute, something like that. Perfectly quiet. 
the chips are flying out of the slot. It's full width slotting. It's not, uh, uh, it's cutting on both sides. Look at that. It's just marching through that. But, now I actually tried cutting it full depth and it actually works, but on the actual piece here I wanted to be a little more conservative and uh, just in case because I got a lot of work in this thing. Okay, so I'm taking it into two wax, about equal depth of cut. And it's, the chips are beautiful, just marching through that stuff. Uh, this is uh, is this 304. Uh, it's 304 stainless here. Maybe 316, but I think it's 304. It's actually uh, a scrap uh, vacuum flange that uh, uh, became uh, this part. <laughs> I gotta be a little careful because there's a radius inside there and I don't want to bump into that radius so I get, gotta pay attention at the end of the cut here to get out of that cut like so. Make sure I'm through the slot but, uh, um, but not bump into the uh, slope of that radius there. So there it is. That's all the slots and it looks, looks like the real McCoy.